Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today. Just one second, and I'll be right there with you. Hello, Uncle. <laughs> Good to hear you, man. A long time no see. I know I've been missing, haven't I? All right, finally, 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 after a whole, almost a week delay, Daily Art Adventure number 779, which I hope to be uh, late edits on two paintings. Now, I, I thought I was done with this painting, but it's been sitting downstairs in my studio. This is a very rare experience for me because uh, over the decades, Pretty much any time I finish a painting, it's out the door and to a gallery as quickly as possible because I want money. <laughs> uh, the difference here is that I'm holding on to this painting for a competition, which again, I, 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 clear, I now clearly understand part of the reason that I have many artist friends who enter competitions a lot and I don't, not all, but in several of those cases it's because they are not dependent upon for their grocery bill and mortgage, they're not dependent on their selling their artwork, so they have the luxury of hanging on to paintings uh, and entering them into competitions because typically you can't enter a painting into a competition if you don't have possession of that painting. Right, because they want to see the real painting if you get into the show. Anyway, so uh, be, I'm just throwing caution to the wind here and uh, hanging on to this particular painting for a competition that I'll be entering in January. And I can enter as many as three paintings. So I don't know if I'll have three, but I'd like to have at least two. So this we want. So anyway, so the, the un, this is very unusual for me to have a painting hanging around the house for a month in this case, where I can look at it. Uh, that, that just never happens. Has has virtually never happened to me. I, I have. Don't get me wrong. I have what I call old maids or problem children paintings. You know, paintings that aren't good. I have lots of those. <laughs> Lots of those hanging around the studio, you know, leaning up against the wall. I don't know what your studio's like, but, you know, like that one right over there, you can you can almost see on the floor. That's a problem. I'll be working on that one next. Anyway, but if I think a painting is done, as I thought this one was, it doesn't stick around. It, it goes out the door. Anyway, so what it, uh, I really enjoyed the, the luxury here, frankly, of having a painting that I can stare at for a while. As I said, I, I thought this painting was finished. So the big change I'm making right now, let, let's, talk about, let's talk about late edits to paintings. Um, and I hope in the very near future, we're actually taking steps now, folks, to begin a, an online painter's forum. We're going to begin by doing a live, in-person painter's forum. Now, painter's forum is the um, <laughs> no. I can you put them up? For, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, can you put them up for sale on condition? Oh no, that's a good question, Uncle. I have never thought about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> in fact, to tell you the truth, I sold a painting eight or ten weeks ago that, that I now wish I hadn't. I sold it for a pittance and I, I keep looking at it on my computer and so forth and on my Fine Art America and, and on my website and go, dang, that was a good painting. I should have kept that one. I really, I really do. I really am disappointed. So I thought maybe I can go back to them and offer a little bit more than they paint. Nah, that would be, that would be rude. That would, <laughs> that would just be <laughs> entirely inappropriate. So no, I don't think I can do that. All right, so forget, hang, I, I keep getting, I, I keep interrupting myself. You can see what I'm doing to this painting. Um, this was a kind of a murky golden brown, you know, sky, low sky. And uh, as it's been sitting in my 
studio downstairs staring at me as I walk by several times a day, I have, I have come to the opinion that, you know what, that m murky golden brown was not the right color. Uh, so I've just, and I decided I'm going to try a green. So I'm, I'm calling this, what I'm doing right now, a green. It's pretty hard to tell really what color it is. Bluish, greenish, grayish. It's a very, very muted tone. Not, not very bright at all. Here, here it is mixed on my palette. That's, that's what I'm using. And just a, a quick reminder in the Dan Nelson school of painting if i if i get uh late 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 in the painting process then quick dry is out the window right so slow dry is in so this is regular titanium titanium white not my normal alkyd fast dry titanium right because i don't want any fast dry to be too 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 dangerous anyway so that's those are the colors that i've mixed up here and uh, I'm happy to say I'm already liking this painting better. So this, this was a good decision to do. Hello, Karen. Hello, I All Art. Thank you very much for your compliment. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uncle 60, how are your eyes, my friend? Just was, had uh, cataract surgery. Is that correct? Bless you. Oh, and you, you said I hate reading glasses. So you're... you're doing some kind of new glasses, I take it. Yes, wishing you all good eyesight. Um, let, me, let me expand a little bit and talk about then, again, <laughs> I keep trying to talk about um, late edits, and I, I, I started telling you that we're going to start an online painter's forum that's what we call our local, which is tonight, by the way, our local painters group. We get together and critique each other. We've been doing it for over 12 years, and it's very, very, very beneficial. I told, I told in fact, last month, I said, if you guys decided to quit tonight, last, last month, I said, if you guys decided to quit tonight, I would start an, another painters group tomorrow. That's just for myself. That's just how important peer review is, in my opinion. I had a person say years ago, well, some people are joiners and some people just aren't. I'm sure. But I, it's, for me, it's not about being a joiner. I'm not a joiner. I'm, a, I'm desperate to get better. But then again, maybe... Anyway, never mind. I, I'll let that go. Um, So in this, in this online painters group, let me tell you what we're going to do. This is the plan, and it'll be available to you guys hopefully soon. Let me, let me point this at me so I can just talk to you guys for a minute. Here's the plan. If you want to participate, you take a picture of your painting best you can. I'll send you, a, you know, tips for taking pictures of paintings with your phone. You send it to me. I tweak it in Photoshop because I don't trust you to take a good picture. <laughs> Whoops! It's hard taking pictures of paintings, frankly, because they're usually glossy or partly glossy. Anyway, so I tweak it to try to, and then I print it out on my printer on canvas. So it's at the moment eight and a half by eleven. I might buy a big printer so I can print it up bigger. And then during the online painters forum, so it'll be Dan Nelson critique. Um, I will paint on your painting. Does that make sense? So I will not only give tips, I'll say, this is what I think would make your painting better. Right? So that's going to be happening. So what I'm doing today is actually closely related to that kind of thing. Because I'm assuming in most cases, our online, my online friends will be sending me... Um, paintings that are either finished or nearly finished, right? So, like this. So the, the question of what kind of edits do you make late in the process is, is pertinent to, the, to that online painters group kind of, kind of issue. 
and I'll go ahead and tell you. Let me look at you again just for a second. Um,
Okay, sorry about that. So sorry, I wasn't didn't see my screen there. My bad. Sound coming, good sound coming in just a minute. bad. I am so sorry, folks. I thought I had checked all my battery levels, and I had not. All right. Sorry about that. Oh, I am so sorry, you guys. I thought I had checked my battery levels and I had missed one device. I'm so sorry about that. All right. Oh, that's just flat embarrassing, that is. All right. I don't know how much you missed. I was talking about energy levels, balanced energy, appropriate energy in every square inch or every section or area of the painting. Oh, I'm sorry about that. All right. One little problem that is going on here is this there's blue highlights on these cars you can see and even though I did come back and do you know a lighter there's it's there's too much sameness way too much sameness in all of that blue so just coming back with a slightly lighter and slightly greener shade of that blue will maybe take care of it all together or at least go a long ways toward taking care of it Oh, I'm sorry about that, you guys. Okay, there are just two more things that I want to fix. Uh, no, my repost, YouTube repost will not have sound. I could go in and edit it and see if I can do voiceover. That wasn't you by any chance, Uncle Sixty, that was the call you. Was it? Oh, that was you. Thank you. Because I saw it was New Jersey. That's a great idea. Do that again. It's we got sound now though, right? Yes, we do. Right, right, right. Okay. Great idea, Uncle. Thank you. Um there's just a few things. Get rid of some static. There we go. Uh, just a few things I want to do now that I've uh, done green behind that lantern, lamppost, street light. And that is, I need to come back now and add the glow. Usually I do the glow first, but because I was, I'm doing touch up. Right? We have sound. Oh, you guys, I'm, again, so sorry. Well, everything I said was stupid <laughs> and unnecessary. <laughs> let's just, let's pretend that was the case. Anyway, again, I was talking about late edits. And now that I have... Um, lighter here. I need lighter on the clouds up there. I've talked before about it's very strange but I, in some ways I trust my painting brain more when I'm painting with my left hand. Isn't that crazy? When I'm painting with my right hand, I'm not, I, and it may just be craziness on my part, but I, my brain feels different and I feel like I trust my intuition um, a little bit more when I'm painting with my left hand. So, because I don't paint with my left hand all the time, by any means. That, that, that's, I'm not suggesting that would be a good idea for me, but that does explain why I was 
doing that bit right there with my left hand. Did you hear me talking about the online painters forum that I believe we're going to start soon? We're actually taking steps. I'm meeting with a small group of friends this evening to uh, talk about starting a local critique where, where I will be critiquing. We already have our monthly peer, peer review, peer peer critique group. That's that's up and running. It's been going for more than 12 years. That's going to keep on. But now we're doing a Dan Nelson critique session through the Fine Arts League of Cary. So I'm excited about that. Again, I'm just adding a little bit of tiny blush of purple, purplish pink. Okay, so the things I fixed is change that to green, that's huge, and fading down to blue, lighten that, brought more variety into the highlights on the cars, and it just dawns on me that this uh, little pale lavenderish color I've got on my brushes right now would be a nice addition to these cars down here. All right, proceeding. <laughs> I think you all understand, all of you painters understand. I'm going to exaggerate, I'm going to state it exaggerate, exaggeratedly first. Every stroke that you put on your painting alters the painting. Duh, that makes sense. Restated in different language. In other words, Every mark you make on your painting, the painting changes. Therefore, after you put down a mark, it's a different painting, then your next mark has to be res in response to or include a consideration of your previous mark. Now, what I'm experiencing here is a real obvious example of that. I just lifted, lightened, heightened the energy level in this painting right here noticeably. Well now this is affecting this. Because everything affects everything, right? And uh, whereas this area down here felt okay earlier, now it doesn't quite feel okay because high energy and then it falls off too quickly. So I'm feeling like I need to come in here. I can come in here, I should say, not like I don't want to. I can come in here and increase the energy down here a little bit. Speaking of, again, energy is one of my favorite words. You know, my grandchildren say, why'd you do that, Bigka? My name is Bigka. Why'd you do that, Bigka? And the answer is because I think, I thought it was going to look cool, because I think it makes a better painting. Uh, to be a little bit more precise, often, why'd you do that, Bigka? <laughs> the answer is because I think that area right there, whatever, needed a little more energy. Now, having said that, I think... I'm kind of I'm thinking on my feet here, so take this advisedly. Take this with caution. Um, yeah, no, I think this is true. So I'm going to say I think the default error mistake in most most of our paintings, most of our most of us who are early journey painters. 
I'm humbly putting my, <laughs> did you catch that? Humbly putting myself in that category. <laughs> and then pointing out how humble I was, thereby, <laughs> thereby, thereby <laughs> uh, blowing away any illusion of humility. <laughs> anyway, um, among early journey painters, uh, the default error, I think most of the time, is too much energy everywhere. Uh, and that clearly has been my, I think, one of my default mistakes over the decades is too high a level of energy. Now, I'm going to use some different words in just a minute to point out what I mean. Let me say it in different words. Too much high energy texture. Too much texture everywhere. Okay. Another way to say that. Not enough rest. Not enough resting here. And I'm assuming most of you have heard that expression. That you're aware of the fact that your eye wants areas of rest, right? Let me use some other terminology that you'll go, oh yeah, I think you're right. It is this. Again, left, at least many of us, left our own devices, we will have too many hard edges and not enough soft edges in our painting. Again, you regularly have heard me say that many times. It's easy for a painting to have too many hard edges, nearly impossible for a painting to have too many soft edges. So, so all the stuff that I'm doing down here, by the way, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure all of it would qualify as soft edges. But I am bumping the energy up a little bit, so I need to be very, very careful about that. All right, just a little bit more sparkle down here than there was. It's, it's pretty soft. When I do this kind of thing, especially in a, uh, in a cityscape, this uh, misty, atmospheric stuff, like, like all this that I've done in here, um, one of one good painter that that is often in the back of my mind is this guy named G. Harvey. G. Harvey. I don't even know what his name is. The letter G. But if you just Google G. Harvey, um, you you will instantly see what I'm talking about. You go, oh yeah, I think he's a good painter. He's. I don't want to paint exactly like him. But I want, I do want to learn all the tricks he knows, right? Boy, that, that's a theme that keeps coming up. I don't, you don't want to paint like Bob Ross, but you sure as heck need to know all of his brush tricks so that you can use them when it's appropriate. You don't want to overuse them the way he did, but you want to know all those tricks. You don't want to be mystified, like, how does he do that? How does he take a palette knife and make a mountain? snow scene, you know? How does he take a fan brush and make a pine tree? Well, that should not be a mystery to you. That's part of your job as an artist, is to know exactly how he does that. And that is part of your job as a good painter not to do it. <laughs> that's, anyway, that's a shorthand way of saying don't overdo it. Same thing with G. Harvey. Um, same thing with, like, I, so often I've talked about Thomas Kincaid, right? You don't curl up your lip and scoff, scorn at him like so many of my artsy friends have done over the years. You stop that. If you're a better painter than him, go ahead. Turn up your lip. But I've never, ever, ever yet been in a room, except maybe at Oil Painters of America, where his, his name was not brought up. Never been in a room where his name was scoffed, where everybody doing the scoffing was a worse painter than he was. Let me repeat that. I've never been in a room where Thomas Kincaid was scoffed at. Never been in a room where there was anybody in the room who's a better painter than him. Okay, so quit your scoffing, I say to myself and everybody, the rest of you too, quit your scoffing until you've learned every trick he knew and then, now you don't have to paint like Thomas Kincaid, of course not. Same thing with G. Harvey. So some of you might look at it and say, ew, he's kind of like Thomas Kincaid. Yeah, he kind of is. Better than Thomas Kincaid, but that's another matter. And who cares? Who's counting? Uh, but you don't curl up your lip and say, hey, I don't want to paint like him. Of course you don't want to paint like G. Harvey. I don't either. 
But doggone it, if I'm not, if I'm so daft and got my lip so busy curling my lip, then I'm not willing to learn anything from anybody. And that's just, you just, all right, that's enough. I, I like that better. Uh, way up here at the top. So let me move you guys. Um, there's a little bit that's happening in the sky where I have pencil lines that look like or look too much like they're laying right like it was the last thing I did and they're laying right on top of the paint. Um, you forgive me for a minute. I'm going to uh, take a minute and lower my lower my easel down. <laughs> the only downside about this easel is it well not the only thing but anyway <laughs> I love it. It's called a, the Carolina by the way. So I, very inexpensive, and I'm finding it quite quite adequate. I bought this easel a couple years ago after my kids moved in downstairs. Well, they moved in upstairs, but during the day they're downstairs. Anyway, the kids moved in, so I bought this so I could paint in my upstairs studio. The Carolina, it's called, by Jerry's Artorama. Um... um yeah, so, of course, as you know, if you see my stuff at all, I, I like, and more and more in the past year, I've gotten way more bold and crazy with these abstract, meaningless in the sense of realism. In other words, they don't, they're not a reference to a real thing. Um, I've gotten much more into, into that. I like it. Maybe in a year I'll go, that was stupid. <laughs> Maybe I'll be a much better painting in a year or five. And hopefully it'll uh, be much better. But anyway, this is where I'm at right now. I like those abstract marks. But, 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 but. Big but. Did you hear that? Um, it doesn't, the effect is not achieved. It doesn't look good if it looks like I just took a black pencil and made a line, made a mark at the end of the painting process. Just, it's not convincing, it's not persuasive. It's like, meh, why do you take a, why do you mess up his painting with a pencil? That's how, it, that's how it looks to me, I think. So, but it's easily fixed, which I'm planning to do right now. So I'm trying to mix up whatever color blue that is. I've got slightly dirty brushes. You know what I mean by that? I didn't clean them thoroughly. So that my blue is being contaminated. And I picked up some phthalo, some ultramarine and some Titanium. Let's see if I'm close. I nope. Way too bright. Way too light. And uh, I'm going to add some violet to that. I'm going to add some color killer to that. My my go-to color killer is student grade raw umber. I am going to come back and so here's my crazy trick. This is nobody, anybody else? Oh, so close, very close. So just it's this has to be either exactly the same color or actually preferably just oh half a tick lighter. By no means darker, never darker. When you're doing opaque, opaque on opaque. You want it lighter, not darker. I'm going to come and add some green to this. So can you see what I did there? I just painted up to that. Now, right there, I covered it over a little bit. That's fine. Now let's let's do some green. Um, so now that pencil line that looked like it was on top like it was the last thing done, because maybe it was. It looked like it was the last thing applied to that area of the painting. Now it doesn't. Now it is the, that pencil line has been enfolded, if you will, into a deeper layer of the painting. And um, so now it looks nice. <laughs> and to me, I might be daft, but it looks, it looks kind of, now it looks cool. So that's just craziness there. I don't know if anybody in the whole world was ever even going to try to emulate me in that in that regard. And it's okay if you don't. Maybe that will remain, you know, Dan Nelson idiosyncrasy. I'm sure there's a 
principle in there somewhere, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. And same thing, here's a, there's a line right here. Can you see that? And it, it looked like it was sitting on top of the painting. So all I do is take mix, match the color that's around it and paint it up to the line on both sides. And, and again, right there, I, I painted over the line. So now it, it looks as though that, that pencil mark, again, is subsumed, is taken into a deeper layer in the painting. Now it has, to me, both of those lines now have a pleasant abstract feel instead of um, not so pleasant. Are there any more like that? No, but um, maybe the last thing I'm going to do here, and I, I really didn't expect to spend quite this much time on this painting. Let me see what you guys are saying. Nope. Um, I think I'm actually going to go into this steeple, which is, as you can see, very much the the star of the show in this in this painting, right? And because I'm not sure that I'm entirely happy with all the brushwork in here, like the clock. Yeah, no, no, I am not. That is to say, yeah, I'm not quite entirely happy. For that matter, I'm not entirely happy with that red blob right there. I like it. it there's just too much of it. So I'm going to try to push it back just a little bit. Okay, before I leave the blue stuff completely, um, again, because everything affects everything else, I'm going to go down here again. So now that I've pumped, bumped this up, all of this is more energy, more and more and more, even this. Now this area right here, the blue right above that, is a little bit, falls back a little bit too far in energy. So what creates energy? Uh, color, edges, texture, um, uh, shift in value. So what I'm doing here is not shift in value, but it's yeah, I am intensifying the color and light, just lightening the value just a little bit. So again, so that's in case you're wondering, well, what, what makes energy? There's not an exhaustive list, but there it is. Uh, intense color. Contrast, contrast of value, hard edges, texture, hard edge texture, those two terms are almost synonymous, almost. I would put the, the, hard, the edge issue as a subset of the broader subject of texture. All right, now I think I'm ready to finally work on this steeple a little bit and then move quickly to us another painting a completely different painting and i'll let this one <laughs> sit downstairs i'll take this painting with me to my painters group tonight by the way since i don't have any other recently finished painting that's on hand um i hope to start another painting this afternoon and maybe maybe start two paintings this afternoon More titanium white, regular titanium, not alkyd, that is. So I'm trying to mix up some really pale, light, uh, beige, tan, white, off-white, warm white, probably the best term, warm white, um, to, to come back into this uh, steeple. 
just a few strokes, just a few strokes that I'm not completely happy with. Yeah, that's better. I had some dirt in there that I, I didn't that I, I didn't like very much. That is better. Yeah, I'll do that right handed. Same thing, a little bit lighter stuff. Now I like this this clock face. before I go there. Clock face needs a little bit of work. <laughs> I got paint all over my fingers. That's not a good way to paint, is it? You don't want to paint with paint on your fingers because then it might get on the painting. Okay, now to the clock face. Put these white, pens, white brushes down. Did you ever pick up a brush and then discover the bristles are just completely hard? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Don't throw those brushes out, right? Because there's, there's ways to clean them. You can't get them back to brand new, but you can get them back to pretty good with a number of products that um, restore dry brushes. But while I'm on the subject, just real quickly. The quickest one, that is if you want to do something quick, is something like this Goop Hand Cleaner. Right? It's a gel-ish kind of stuff. Um, you stick your brushes in that and rub them vigorously in the palm of your hand or some other medium soft surface for several, for many minutes, 20, 25 minutes maybe, 15, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And very often you can bring those dry brushes back to functionality right on the spot. So that's a good trick if you don't know it. So I just did some parallel, some transparent dark, uh, dirty purple on um, on that clock face. I'm going to mix up a very warm yellow or dark orange. No, light orange or very warm yellow, whichever you prefer. And just do a quick touch on these two hands. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if this is still the case. I've not done any research on it lately. But traditionally, um, if you pull up a catalog, like on the internet, <clears throat> where they're selling watches or clocks, um, analog watches or clocks, um, the time on those clocks will be set at 8.20. It's just 
Now I'm curious. I'm going to go back. I, I learned that years ago, so many years ago, that now I wonder if, it's, if they've changed. It's either 8.20, I think, or, or 10 after 10. In either case, the angle is essentially the same. Now I've got, now I'm doing a, there's some, boy, look at that, there's some tongue painting with how I'm holding the brush, violating all the minor hints and raves. But there, that's a little better. It looks a little more like gold letters. I'm happy with that. All right, I'm going to put this painting away. I'm happy with the little changes that I just made in that. And uh, without any pause, go to a, another painting. Now this one I started, again, a couple months ago and it's been sitting. It's almost a problem child. I did take this to, my, to the painter's group a couple months ago. And hang on, I'm going to get get up on in your view here just a minute um, and generally it received a, a warm <laughs> welcome um, but I'm still not completely happy with it let's see some of you old timers will remember this I set up my easel on Hargett Street downtown Raleigh. There's a row of coffee shops um, right there on a Saturday evening. And I do have, um, I'll take this over here I guess. I have a couple prints. Where's my other one? Here it is. I never finished this painting. This is still, I would call this late edits in a painting, but not as late as the, the one I just worked on. So um, I'll let you see what I'm doing, even though it's not very exciting. Um, I'm going to clean off my, my palette, get rid of the slow dry titanium. This painting does not have a lot of layers on it, so I can still use my normal Get rid of the Neo McGilp, which I was surprised to discover oh, a couple of months ago that Neo McGilp is actually listed as a fast dry medium. <laughs> I guess it's all relative. Um, <laughs> for me, someone who's accustomed to uh, liquid, in my book, in my world, Neo McGilp is a slow dry medium. But evidently, as I said, it's just all relative. <laughs> it's evidently there are a lot. Of, there, I know there are many, many much slower mediums out there. Anyway, but I never, never use them. I don't. I can't remember the last time. Twenty years ago is the last time I used linseed oil like my daddy did. I, I love the smell of linseed oil because it takes me back to my childhood. <laughs> my dad painted. All right, so let's, first of all, there are a couple of real obvious edits that are, are not edits, finishes. I'll turn this off so you can see if that works better for you. Yeah, for a little while, you still have a bad glare over here. And if I turn that off, whoops, how does that look? <laughs> now you have glare off the window over here. <laughs> All right, but I can't. I can't do that. That's um. Here's the photograph. Again, I did this painting on plein air. Started it, but I've worked in it, on it in the studio a couple times since I did it on plein air. Uh, lights in these windows. 
it, it would help. In other words, I need considerably more energy. Lots of energy here, obviously. I'm, I mean, I've, I've accomplished, you know, part of my objective really well. That is focus, focal point, high energy. But I've almost accomplished it too well because there's big energy and ooh, not enough everywhere else. There's quite a bit here, but I'm not entirely thrilled with it. The color there either. So, um, so some windows up here and here. Um, let's just start with that, but hang on just a second. Most of the time when I launch into a painting that's dry, this is what I tell my students to do all the time. Start with a glaze. Why? Well, that several reasons. One is because glazes make everything look better. Transparent colors are more interesting than opaque. And so the last stuff I put in here, of course, was opaque. So I do if I do glaze on top of that, it's transparent. Then then I'll come back with more opaque, of course. But so it increases the depth of the painting every time you put a glaze on it. But another why is because most paintings are lacking in darks. Now that's where this painting um, doesn't fit the norm because uh, this this painting is actually almost too dark already. But that remember, lightening, making a painting lighter is easy peasy because you just do opaque light bits, right? So that, that's easy. Whereas if the painting's too light, then it's a two-step process. You have to first of all darken it with transparent glazes and then lighten it on top of that because you never finish with a darkening process. That makes sense? You never finish, it's darks first, lights last. Always lights last, always lights last. You never finish with darken. And not because it's a rule, but because of how your eyes, what your eyes like. And that, that, as far as I'm gonna pursue that. Um, so this particular painting does not need to be darkened. If anything, it needs to be lightened. But there's one more reason to do a glaze. Okay, I've given you two. One is richness, depth of richness. Number two is adding more dark. I don't need richness or dark. But the third reason is to shift the color. And there, I think that this painting might could stand. So breaking out the, the classic liquid. And uh, the downside of liquid is it's kind of smelly. Uh, the good news is I'm the only one home today, so my studio door is open. And even though I don't have an air conditioning unit in the window beside me, here's my window, by the way. There I am standing right outside. Um, the window is open. So I'm getting a nice little cross breeze. I'm just, I'm talking about this because of the health hazards of using smelly mediums. Uh, and I've got a ceiling fan on right over, almost over my head, over my left shoulder. So I feel fairly safe about the effects, the impact of liquid here. So the reason I'm going to do a glaze, so they're twofold. One is I'm, I am going to add another level of richness by doing transparent on top of opaque in a color made that don't look better with something else on top of it, which is another way, it's a crazy way of saying transparent colors look better than opaque. Does that mean you want at the end all your painting? No, you don't want it all to be transparent. Why? Because variety trumps the rule I just gave you. The rule, transparent colors look better than opaque. That rule is trumped by variety rule. That is, variety is better than sameness. Um, but I do want to shift the color of this a little bit. I feel like it's all a little bit too red-orange. Okay, now I have a, I have a routine 
that I go through with my students, live students, all the time, and I hope you've heard it before. And it so sounds kind of crazy, but there's method to my madness. When they come back to a painting that's dry, like on day two of a class, they are required to say, I like it pretty much. And half of them, two-thirds of them, choke on it. You can't believe it. We go around, and, and I, I have to tie them up, lay them on the railroad track with a on-rushing locomotive before they'll say, okay, I like it pretty much. Because most of you are suffering from that crappy self-talk. You're never going to become a good painter if you hate your painting. You become a good painter by liking it. There's still room for improvement, but you like it. Therefore, you say, I like it pretty much, okay? So this is what I do to myself as well. Even if you're not watching in my head, whether I say it out loud or not, I say, hmm, I like it pretty much. That's a requirement. You may not say, I can't, I, can't. I hate it. It's not very good. No, 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 no. I know we're getting into, anyway, never mind. So I like it pretty much. I just wish it was more blank. And the blank is a color. Not You can't say lighter or darker because we're doing a glaze now. It's going to get darker. So you can't say I wish it was lighter. And there's no point in saying I wish it was darker because that goes without saying. If you're doing a transparent glaze, so I'm not talking about lighter or darker. I'm talking about color. I like it pretty much. I just wish it was more. And I do have an answer to this. I like it quite well, actually. I just feel like it's a little too orange. So I, that is to say, I wish it was more blue here or more purple. Why? Because I'm going to anti-orange it. Are right, you with me? Anti-orange is what? Blue, right across the color wheel, right? But I don't want, I don't want to, I certainly don't want a phthalo blue because I don't want it going green. So I want it a ultramarine or even a purplish blue. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to anti-orange this. Now the rest of the painting I think I might actually uh, make it more orange, which would in effect be brown up there in these outlying areas. But anyway, let's start with what I feel confident about, which is uh, anti-oranging, if you will, the middle. So I'm picking up pure with liquid, no white. In fact, there's no white on my palette at all. I wiped it all off. And when I do come back with white this time, review time, Right, it is going to be alkyd, fast dry titanium. All right, but that's that's I'm getting ahead of myself. Right now, I'm doing dioxazine violet and ultramarine blue, so it's a bluish violet or a violetish blue, whichever, whichever you want to call it. Okay, so that's what you call, and when you when, every time you start a glaze, by the way. The first few strokes are just shocking <laughs> because it's until you get it spread out. So don't 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 be surprised if you know. Don't stop with the first few first few strokes. <laughs> Keep going. Now I'm going to experiment with because um, I'm not sure. And by the way, why is everything I'm doing right now so easy and so safe? The reason is because I could take a, a rag, which is right here, a whole bunch of rags and wipe everything I just did, I can wipe it completely off, right? So I'm, don't give me credit for like being brave or bold or anything like that, because it's just, it's just not true. I'm not being brave or bold. Yeah, I'm playing with a safety net. Big safety net. The safety net, net is I can wipe everything that I just put on, I can completely wipe it off. Although I'm not going to, because I like the way it's going. Now I'm just playing with degrees of color and intensity of glaze. All right, now I, the only, I don't like this right here, and that's no problem. I, I knew I wasn't gonna like that with purple on it. So watch, I just come in here with a little rag and Lift that out, and that's 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 pretty good right there. That's that's pretty close. Painting is better. Yahoo! 
the painting is better. That's crazy. I want you to understand how easy that was, how many minutes I spent doing that. Very few. I spent more time talking about it than with you guys than I, than I, than I, than I spent actually doing it. That makes me feel better. So I just anti-oranged this. And because every color looks better transparent than opaque, every, all these colors are richer and more interesting. Now, I'm, my painting is not done at this point because you finish with a, a lightening stage, not a darkening one. And, um, hang on just a second, let me think. No, I don't want purple up there. So at the very least, I would come in with a rag and lighten stuff. For instance, let's say, like, come into these sparkly lights in the trees up here. And there have been a few times, uh, it's more often than that, there couple times a year maybe where I do in fact finish a painting completely by glazing and then ragging and then I'm done but that will not be the case on this painting way more often I glaze than paint well I, oh, let me I glaze then rag that is lift out then paint and that is certainly what I'm going to be doing uh, on this painting today all right, Whew. oh, what a relief. The painting is so much better. I don't know if you can see it or not. And it's just subtle, subtle shift, subtle changes, uh, but it's better. Okay, give me a minute, I'm gonna try to clean these, these two brushes. I would like to use the same ones again. So as much as this drives, um, Michael Carter, crazy, <laughs> who manages to paint without ever cleaning his brushes in, in, in a solvent, which I just think is amazing. But I, I can't, I can't seem to bring myself to emulate him in that regard yet, even though I think it's wonderful. All right, so I just used Gamsol to clean these brushes. Got it on my hands, which means going and. Uh, washing my hands shortly is in my agenda. If you guys, if I wasn't broadcasting, I'd go clean, wash my hands down the hall right now. But. All right, now I just, uh, I'm, I'm cleaned these brushes just enough as I said earlier, I think one of the things that's bothering me about this painting, I'm looking at the photo, yeah, is there's too much differentiate, differentiations. Too warm, too cool. So I've just cooled the warm area. Now I'm going to do the opposite and warm the cool area. That's an unusual problem, I think. I don't remember that happening very many times. So I've got a uh, Indian yellow, which of course a little Indian yellow goes a long way. I don't know if you know that or not. You probably do. It's like, it's like phthalo. It's like a it's like a phthalo blue. A little bit of it goes a long way with a little bit of uh, some kind of orange. I don't know what kind of orange. So it's a warm, warm um, yellow orange that I'm putting on. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of Scarlet Lake. So if you will, I'm, I'm saying about this part of the painting, I like it pretty well. I like it pretty well. <laughs> I just wish it was more. I just wish it was more. Red. Red-orange. Check. Done. Same thing over here. And I've, this, this, again, the canvas has been leaning up my, against my 
wall for a couple months now, making me ever so slightly grumpy every time I look at it. <laughs> Do you know the feeling? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that ever so slightly grumpy feel? <laughs> it's like, ah, something's not right there. But it's already just with a few minutes I've spent on it here. It's already better. Oh yeah, in fact, that, that, that encouraged by a degree of success, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to push it a little bit further. Now I'm just picking up pure orange and a scarlet lake on my brushes. Just warming up. Oh, that's so much better. Woo! What a relief. So I don't even, I, don't, I can't remember specifically ever doing that exact thing before, which is cooling the warm area and warming the cool area. Um, but the canvas is, the painting is hanging together much better now than it was just a few minutes ago. More of the same Scarlet Lake and some kind of orange. One of the things I would love for you to see in this And uh, I'm not getting any chats from anybody. I hope that I haven't lost it. Let, let's see if... Uh, hang on just a second. Let me make sure I, my chats haven't frozen here on my monitor. Come on, come on, come on. Nope, okay, just nobody said anything for the last hour. That's all right. I want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. All right, and I'm going to put these brushes over here and take them out to the garage and clean them thoroughly later. I'm going to end this broadcast in a little while. I'm not going to um, carry it all, this, this whole painting through to fruition. Uh, the good news is I have two paintings I can take with me to my painter's group tonight. They've seen them both, uh, but we very much enjoy uh, seeing repeats from each other. You know, we'll bring a painting in and we'll get different kinds of feedback on it. I'm afraid I'm going to be standing right in front of you. Uh, and we, we very much like seeing for, for people to bring back a painting that, you know, we commented on last month or whatever. So that's clearly that's what I'll be doing tonight. And uh, So I am, as you can see, I am increasing the energy in this painting, in this area of the painting significantly by adding those windows. I'm not done there, of course, but I just want to make the, make the point that this, again, the, the word I would use most, the internal as I'm, as I'm making this change is I'm increasing, which is what it needed. Uh, there was too much energy here, not enough everywhere else. So I am rectifying what was a definite weakness. But again, the issue is proper balance of energy throughout the entire canvas. That, of course, that doesn't mean, no, no, I don't mean equal. Oh my goodness, no, 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 no. But I'm assuming you know that. I don't mean equal energy. Whew. No, 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 no. What I mean is appropriate levels of energy. That's what I mean by balance appropriate levels of energy uh, across the different, um, it, across the whole canvas, across the different sections. 
if you want to be in engineerish about it you could say something like every square inch of the painting needs to have the appropriate amount of energy in it but of course as artists we don't really think in terms of square inch I'm just trying to make the point that the the whole canvas the entire canvas is uh, properly get for it like, I like the word balanced but that doesn't mean equal balance. It means appropriate level. So I'll be doing, now that I did dark over the entire canvas, now I will be coming back and doing light here, there, here, there, here, and there. Um, there's some more windows up here. I haven't decided if I want, want them to be warm like these two, or what, do I want them to reflect the blue sky behind us? Um, don't know yet so I'll be thinking about that one okay but I think I'm gonna do the rest of this painting uh, on my own thank you for your company and your chats and letting me know when my sound isn't working oh good grief um, I hope I hope I hope to uh, start two painting, or at least a painting, start a painting or two this afternoon. Um, and if I do that, I will start another broadcast, which will be number 780. Woohoo! <laughs> and uh, I hope you can join me for that. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for your company. Bye bye.